take a look at my website, ufablogger.com. Now take a look at this other subdomain, which is clone.ufablogger.com. It has the exact same content, the exact same pictures, categories, pages, logo as my primary website. Now, how did this happen? I simply made a clone of my primary website. Now, if you want to learn how to do the same, stay tuned. That's coming up in this episode of The Web Monkey. Well, greetings and salutations and welcome to another episode of The Web Monkey. And today, I am going to show you how to backup and duplicate your entire WordPress website. We are going to be making use of a plugin known as the Duplicator. It is by Corey Lamley and Bob Riley. And as you can see, this is a very popular plugin with over 900,000 downloads and the ratings are simply incredible. Now, in order for us to make a clone of our WordPress website, we are going to need three things. First things first, we're going to need a domain for our clone website. So this can either be a subdomain of the site that we want to clone, or it can be a separate domain altogether. I am going to be making a clone of my website here, which is the ufablogger.com. So I am going to create a subdomain of this particular website. The second thing we're going to need is a database that will host the files for our clone website. And then third, we are going to need an FTP account because we're going to be transferring files from our computer to our clone website via FTP. I already have an FTP account, but I do not have a subdomain and I do not have a database for my clone website. So let's go ahead right now and create a subdomain for the ufablogger.com website. And I am over here in my cPanel. I host with SiteGround, which is the very best web hosting company there is. So in the domain section, I'm going to click on subdomains. And very simply in here for the subdomain, I'm going to type in clone. And then I'm going to choose the main domain, which is ufablogger.com. And I'll just click on create. And we are done. We have created the subdomain. Let's go back. Let's go back to the cPanel home. The next thing we're going to do right now is to create a database. So let's come all the way down here to my SQL database wizard. Now for the name of the database, I'm simply going to say clone. Next step. Let's create a user, which would be cloner. And for the password, let's use the password generator. Let me copy this and paste that somewhere safe. Okay. Let's use the password. Let's create a user and I'll assign all privileges to this user. And we are done. So we have created a database, which is the clone. We have a user cloner and we have a password. Awesome. Now let's go to the back end of our ufablogger.com website. I have already installed and activated the duplicator plugin. And you can see right now I do have the tab in here. So I'm going to click on packages. Now in the duplicator terminology, a package simply refers to a backup. So I haven't created any backups yet. And that's why we have no packages found. So I am going to click on create new over here. Now you will see on the top here, we have requirements pass. Now, this is basically just a way for the plugin to ensure that our system requirements must pass in order for the plugin to work properly. And you can see right now we have requirements for PHP support, required paths, server support, and also reserved files. Now, hopefully, if you're doing this along with me, you also have a pass on all four. If you don't, there might be something wrong with your web hosting package. You might want to contact your web hosts and try to figure out what exactly is going on. Now for the name, we can change the name in here. Let's just simply say uh, backup. That will be the name of our backup. Now for storage, this simply refers to the temporary location where our backup will be stored. Uh, for the archive, if for some reason you wanted to exclude certain tables from your database from being duplicated, you can simply click on database in here, check the uh, enable table filters and then choose the specific tables that you would like to duplicate, those that you don't check 
would not be duplicated. However, I do not know why you would want to do something like this. I mean, the whole point of duplicating your site is so that you can have the exact same copy of your website on another domain, right? So let me just uncheck this. Let me close this. And finally, we have the installer section where we'll ignore this for now because we can make the same uh, settings and changes later on in the video. So I'll just go ahead right now and click next. So the plugin, once again, is scanning the site. It's going through all the files that we have on our WordPress website. But now you can see we do have some warnings. First of all, we have a warning here for WordPress. So let's see what this is about. Okay, so it, tell, it tells us there is something wrong with our cache. Uh, cache data will lead to issues at install time and increases your archive size. Uh, it is recommended to empty your cache directory at build time. So here's the thing though. Whenever you have warnings, it doesn't necessarily mean that the duplication process won't work. It's just a way of telling you that there might be some issues. So you can either go ahead and attempt to run the process, or you can simply take care of the issues. I am going to go ahead right now and empty my cache. You can see right now I have the path right here. So I'm just going to go ahead to the cache folder and I'm going to empty whatever I have in there. There is another one in, in here for large files. And this is because I do have some audio files in my media library. Let me just quickly show you uh, library. And as you can see right now, I do have an audio file in here and the size is three megabytes as you can see. And according to the plugin, it says that, well, the current check for large files is three megabytes, megabytes per file. So, in such a scenario, I can either choose to delete my audio file or I can just go ahead and keep it. I am going to keep it. I am not going to delete the audio file. And finally, we have table details. We have another one in here, which is, well, quite frankly, some advanced stuff in here. So I'm just going to go ahead and ignore this. We actually don't need to change anything in here. Uh, the reason why I'm showing you all of this is so that you can know that uh, sometimes you would not have good on every single uh, requirement. So what I'm going to do right now is to pause the video. I'm going to go ahead and empty the cache and then I'll come back here and do a rescan. Okay, I'm back and I have emptied the cache. So what I'm going to do right now is to come back here and click on rescan. So let's see what we have over again. All right, awesome. So now you can see that the cache path now gives us uh, the good pass. We have now passed that because we've emptied the cache. We still have warnings for the large files, but that's because I did not delete the audio file. And for the table details, again, like I said, I'm not going to bother myself with that. So let's go ahead right now, click the checkbox in here, and let's go ahead right now and build. So right now the plugin is basically making a backup of our entire WordPress website. So this might take a while. I think I'll just pause the video once again and then, oh, <laughs> so it's actually created the backup in 9.76 seconds. Okay. I think Usain Bolt actually ran the 100 meters faster than that, but who cares? Anyway, we now have two separate files. We have the installer, which is the actual program that will do the cloning. And then we have the archive, which is the actual backup of our WordPress website. So I am going to download both files right now by simply clicking on the buttons. This might take a while, so I'll pause the video once again and resume once the download, as you can see right here, is completed. Okay, I'm back, and as you can see, I have successfully downloaded the backup and the installer files. Now, I am going to drag my FTP software, which is FileZilla, in here. And you can see right now, I have connected to the clone website. And over here, I do have the backup and the installer, so I am simply going to copy both. And I'm going to upload them to the public HTML directory of my clone website. So this, again, will might take a while, as you can see. So I'm going to pause the video once again, go grab myself a cup of coffee, and I'll resume the video once the upload has been completed. 
Okie dokie, we're back and as you can see right now, I have successfully uploaded the backup and the installer.php files to the public HTML directory of our clone website. So let me just drag this away and now I am going to bring over the clone.ufrblogger.com website and the URL, I am going to add a forward slash and I am going to run the installer php file press enter and now okay cool awesome so in here we'll have to add the credentials for the database that we created earlier in the video so the database was a mary uh, 618 clone the user i believe was cloner and for the password i'm just going to copy the password from my text file in here let's copy that I'm going to paste that right here. Let's test the connection. And there you go. We've successfully connected to the database. So I'm just simply going to click on the checkbox in here that says I have read and accepted all warnings and notices, even though <laughs> I really didn't read anything. I'll go ahead right now and run deployment. Yes, let's do it. So right now the cloning process is underway. Okay, let's now go ahead and run the update. It's updating the files and database right now. And there you go. The final steps now is we can either save our primal links, we can test the site, we can do a security cleanup as well. Let's just go ahead, click on test site, and take a look at that. We have the clone.ufablogger.com website exactly as we have our main website, which is ufablogger.com, as you can see. Awesome. All right. There's one more thing we can do, which is to do a security cleanup where we can remove all the unnecessary files that were used during the uh, duplication and cloning process. So let's go ahead and click OK in here. And now I am going to log in. And there you go. So in here right now, we can go ahead right now and clean all the unnecessary files. Let's delete the reserved files. Let's go ahead and delete the legacy data. Okay. And finally, we can clear build cache as well. Let's do that. And there you go. So we've cleaned up all the unnecessary files in our clone website. And as you can see, once again, it is exactly the same as the actual website itself. As you can see, the exact same files, the exact same pictures, the exact same plugins as well. As you can see, let's take a look. Plugins, Akismet, Black Studio, Contact Form. Let's take a look at the clone. Plugins, yep, Akismet, Black Studio, Contact Form, and so on and so forth. So that's exactly how to make a backup and a duplicate, a clone of your WordPress website using the powerful duplicator plugin. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you liked the video, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. We're going to be making lot, lots more videos like this in the future. Thank you so much once again. And as always, I will see you in the next class. Bye.